Bukayo Saka oh, has been nominated oh, for the PFA on. Fans That's Player the of morning. the Month Award for December. Now, the 19-year-old has been one of the few shining lights in Arsenal, and he has already been named Player of the Month by Arsenal. And now Saka's brilliance in December has been recognized by the PFA, who have put him up as a nominee for their Fans Player of the Month. But then, he'll be contesting the accolade with... Bruno Fernandes of Manchester United, as well as Marcos Rashford, Thomas Suchek, Nick Pope, and Anwar El Ghazi. Bukayo Saka totally deserves every accolade that he has gotten from Arsenal. But do you think he can win the Player of the Month award with all the other nominees in the category? Well, if you look at Arsenal's performance mm. in the last month, I think they probably there amongst the, uh, the teams that have performed very well. Surprisingly, yeah. they've had a, fun, a very terrible... Uh, December, mm -hmm. uh, with all the losses that they had and all the other stuff. But just coming into January, towards the end of December, yeah. they played quite they well. Up. They won like about three games on the bounce. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not happened for them with them for a while. And that's yeah. obviously lifted them from where they are to 11th on the table. Yeah. Saka has done very well. But uh, uh, if you look at the other players that he's coming up against, mm -hmm. uh, you look at the input of those individuals. Yeah. Yes, I know that Saka has been very instrumental to the way Arsenal has played when he go forward with his blistering pace and his dribbling skills. Yeah. And then once in a while, getting the goals as well. And then, of course, he's also doing the assists. So if you look at him, it looks like a total, complete package. Mm -hmm. But he still needs a whole lot of maturity. Yeah. But you look at the likes of Bruno Fernandes, that guy, I'm not a big fan of Manchester United, obviously, maybe because of my affiliation <laughs> with my own club. But Bruno Fernandes is like, I don't know how to describe this guy. He's, a, he's, like, he's got charisma. It's like his talisman. When the team is losing, he seems to be the one that pulls the chestnut out of the fire, and mm. he keeps doing this all the time. Yeah. And he's on verge, on the verge of actualizing something that has never been done by any player, which is to win four Player of the Month award mm -hmm. in one season. If he does it, it's going to be the first time to be ever done. I think Bukayo's case is like Usain Bolt. You know, mm. you, you also look behind you and like he has passed through. Like, where did this mm. guy come from? You know, he came from nowhere and. You know, sometimes I look at Bukayo Saka and I feel like a woman who has aborted his, her child and is regressing now and saying, ah, this guy, I can't play for Nigeria now, you know? Mm. You, 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 you must always feel like that, you know? Yeah. Bukayo Saka is, is, um, is astronomical. Guys, going forward, he's like, he's on fire, mm -hmm. like on drugs, you know? And you ask, you ask yourself, where did this guy come from? Where has he been all this while? Yeah. But he's, he's still very young. He's got many years ahead of him. And you're going to see England swarming around him like bees right now. I just wish the guy just look around and say, okay, good. I'm going to Nigeria, you know? If we have a Bukayo Saka, a Chukwezi, another one on our team, we can beat anyone. Well, Bukayo Saka is out already. Yeah. 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 Except we wait for it to see whether he plays those three games. You know, yeah. FIFA just tweaked yeah. uh, oh, yeah. the international but, rules. But you can't but always feel like this guy. But at this point in time, like I said, the players, the fans play of the month is not going to happen now for him. But he has many more years to go. He has many more months to go. Why do you think so? Because I, I think he's done well. Yeah, I think going up against the look, look, Bruno look, Fernandes, for example. For example. And then we're also not one. mentioning somebody who I also feel probably deserves it, probably more than Bruno Fernandes, mm. the man from Aston Villa, El Ghazi. El Ghazi. El Ghazi has been yeah. awesome. You know, we're also yeah. not talking about the fact that um, most footballers, mm. past footballers, Nascimento, Pelé, um, Maradona before he died, a lot of them actually came together and agreed that one of the biggest English players as we speak today is Marcus Rashford. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think he's good, but I, I don't know. Marcus Rashford is a good player, but I still don't think I would put him on the level of the likes of uh, Gaza, for instance. Mm. Poor Gascoigne. No, no. They're not comparing them. Okay, they're saying for, to him, for now. For present. now. Okay. Nobody can compare to Gaza, really, for now. You know, but yeah. truth be said, all things being equal, I still think that. Um, Fernandes might, might have this one again. Yeah. If not Fernandes, Especially when you he look has at, to be... When yeah, you look at the way Man United now are at the top. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is a whole lot. True. Aston Villa, yes, but Fernandes' contribution, mm -hmm. albeit penalties majorly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's but, propelled his team from outside the top four, mm. suddenly into four, and then now competing, if not, if not him, Elgazi. Yeah. 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 So it, it's looking like fingers will be pointing towards Bruno Fernandes. But let's talk about Bukayo Saka and the Super Eagles. And I'm surprised Nigeria. Jack Grealish is, is, not, is, is not on the list. Well, you know do when you, sometimes when you do so much of assists and uh, you don't get to score the goals as much as you should, mm. uh, especially when you now have a player like El Ghazi, who came from, like, let me borrow from Wally, nowhere. I mean, El Ghazi has been in Aston Villa for a long yeah. time and he's had a very barren spell for a long time. But all of a sudden, 
his blog just starts goals. clicking and all of a sudden this guy becomes the man who scores the goals for goals. Aston Villa. Mm. And, it, and I feel for him it's not bad at all. But then talking about Bukayo Saka in Nigeria, I think we should just forget about Bukayo Saka. With, <laughs> the, way he, with the way he's performing now, yeah. it's going to be difficult for England. To, to he's, they've, already, they've already um, featured him. They've capped him for about two games. Two games, my memory yeah. me, right? And he played very well in those two games. Uh, one more. And that's it for Nigeria, mm -hmm. even with the tweaking of the international rules yeah. for uh, change of and uh, switch of nationality. It's not probably going to be possible. But it it, it, it I, I doesn't even look like... for Fulham, Tomori yeah. or something. No, 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 that, that's Chelsea. The, the, the no, Fikara Tomori. There's this yeah. guy in Fulham. The, 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 there are so many players. Have you he, guys... plays, he plays on the right wing. And this guy is fantastic for Fulham. Fulham is coming forward and he's in... Oh, that's... You're talking about I know. All I know is... That, Olai, it's Olai, no, no, no. No, no. There's he's another striker. Nigerian. striker. I can't remember his name. Ademola, yeah. Ademola, yeah. yeah. We've, we've had a the look guy, at him. The guy plays I don't on the think, right wing for Fulham and the guy know, is massive. When, when it comes to the Super Eagles of Nigeria mm -hmm. now, I, I, I think, I, I, I might be wrong, but I think there's something wrong with our scouting system. Okay. Now there's Ebele Chese now who plays for Crystal Palace. We've not been able to seal his uh, coming back but that's not, to play for Nigeria. In Nigeria. fairness to the NFF, mm -hmm. that's not the NFF's fault. Mm -hmm. um, Ebele Chese is actually still holding out and he feels that. You know, we, we can't blame some of these players. I mean, I mean they, they grew up in England or they grew up outside the country. Yeah. And if they feel they have a fair chance to make the uh, teams of those countries who seem to have been more well-organized yeah. over the years compared to Super Eagles, maybe now, yes, we're trying to put things right and start looking at some of these players outside. But we can't blame the likes of the Bridges. I know that Amadou Pinnick, for one, has been on the bridge. He's, uh, he's his case. He's, been, he's traveled to England several times. Yeah. Even Gennard Raw has been to England, tried to, you know, lure this guy away from uh, playing for England. But when you see the goal that this guy scored, I think this January, mm -hmm. I mean, crazy true solo run, those are the kind of goals that would not allow England to let to go. Let go. Players so like that, that, that's my point. Uh, why do we have to lure players to come play for the Super Eagles of Nigeria? I think it should be an easy decision for them. The same thing happened with Tammy Abraham. We kept on talking to him and mm. he said he was holding on to make a decision and Lo and behold, he chose England. And I just have a funny feeling that, that Ebereche Ebereche will do the same. Do the same just yeah, like Bukayo Saka also honestly, did the let's same. Let's ourselves. Yeah. Mikel Obi has consistently told the world, mm. stupidly, that he cannot kill himself for Nigeria. Okay. And he gave examples of Dosu Joseph. But do you, do you actually blame him for saying that? Well, you see, I don't. I, 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 you feel I, that I, that patriotism should be... He should at least pretend especially like he... Being a captain of he should at least pretend before. like he, you know, he... He will yes. die for the country, but mm. he won't die, you know? Mm. And um, these people have watched these interviews. They've seen how we treat our players. Yeah. And I don't think... First of all, if I, if I grew up in England and I, 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 I was made... And England says they want me, or I suspect England wants me, it's only fair to play for them. Mm. They made me what I am today. However, if I want to play for Nigeria, I will consider and say, if I play for them, will it be worth the while? Mm. Do these guys care? They already know we don't care. Okay. We, we don't care about our players. If you die, you die, Sarah. <laughs> Dosu Joseph had an accident somewhere in the Kedja. Mm. The NFF initially promised they would help him out. Mm. And then after a while, they receded and said, listen, guy, you were on private trip. Mm. Even, were, even though they had just re returned from an international team. And they let him, and, and they have not given him a dying till today. We've seen people die. Mm. I saw Paul Hamilton die in, my, in front of me. He first of all got his right leg cut. And he got his second leg cut, and I was sitting there watching him shut out the leg, pinning him, and he just died there in front of me. Mm. And the guy's wife had been going to Abuja, going and coming, looking to get his money from them. It's, 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 it's sad that this, our, our leaders actually sit down in their homes, sipping champagne, and have no guilty conscience. Mm. How do you work like that? And you see, like I always said on the show, if we consider like this, eh? it's the end point that matters, like age cheating. Mm. No matter how long you lie about your age, it mm. will tell one day. You can't cheat nature. Yeah. You know, and if we continue to cheat our players like this, players like Eze and Tomori, Tomori and Bukai will not come. Mm. Because it's so, obvious that we don't, we don't care about our players. Mm. So why come all the way here, get a broken leg, and then, okay, but I just hope that the tables will turn some day. I remember having an interview. We could actually turn around. Let's be honest with ourselves. I know that while he's speaking based on experience, yeah. of course we've seen it all over the years. Mm. Samuel Faraji, we know how much he took before the sports minister was the only one to, not the only one anyway, at least to make a major impact and say, you know, okay, your parents or your mother, who's the surviving parent you have, 
should have something unfortunate. After many years. It came too late it because at the end of the day, she also passed on. Passed on but yeah. to be honest, I, I think um, it goes beyond what we're paying them in terms of bonuses. Mm. Um, I mean, our players are probably one of the best paid. Let's not lie to ourselves. True, in, I agree with in you. In the fact that they earn $10,000 mm -hmm. for a win, for crying out loud. I don't think a lot of the other players, even in Europe, mm. earn that. The Very way they much. do their own payments is not even structured the way ours is, where you earn your money immediately after the game the is games. played. I know that a lot of countries in Europe wait till you finish whatever assignment, if it's a qualifier for yeah. the World Cup, you finish and they collate all your money together and you get, and paid. You get paid it into, into your account. But that system works because those players believe in their officials. They also feel that at the end of our assignment, we'll be paid whatever is worth for us. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be about that, to be honest. What it's about is about, it's about welfare, mm -hmm. which Wally mentioned a lot. If players from all these European countries, I and mean some of the African countries as well, get injured or they have any issues, their country takes care of them. Yeah. Let me give and you a typical example. Mm -hmm. I don't like Ama Jupinik very much. Mm. He doesn't like me either. And the feeling is very mutual. And I don't care about <laughs> it. I asked a question. Somebody asked me a question on a different platform and said, listen, it's not, and FIFA or CAF or something has given our players foreign and home-based, mm. some palliatives, financial palliatives okay. to give. And I told the guy, you will not hear about this thing again from now. Okay. Which player, which team, which Nigerian team, which foreign player has received one Naira from that palliative until now? Well, uh, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't have I, 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 I don't want to delve into yeah. politics like that. Yeah. But that because it's I not believe, politics. I, I, no, it's I also ballroom. believe that NFF, in a way, I'm not holding forth for them. Mm. But I believe that in a way they've tried to say, okay, we've used this money for this. It's bro probably, broken it, it down. It behoves on, it behoves on us to find out and investigate mm, and true. find out whether they have done what they say they have done. Mm -hmm. I know that there's quite some disgruntled elements somewhere mm -hmm. in the football fraternity saying that, uh, well, FIFA has given us some, some funds mm -hmm. uh, to, to alleviate our sufferings during the COVID-19. Yeah. And we haven't seen any. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that sports writers, for instance, were given something. I don't know whether it was proportional to what they were supposed to give, but NFF are the ones mm -hmm. they hold the knife and they hold the stuff yeah, exactly. itself. So uh, right. I, don't, I don't like going into stuff like we that unless work, I am sure about it. We should, exactly. work, we should work on welfare because I don't have to be sure to say what I've not seen. Mm. You know, I have not seen anyone come out and say, thank you very much, NFF, thank mm. you very much, FIFA. I have not seen any team come out and do that. Mm. I have not, and during the COVID-19, nobody was going down, so they can't say they say they use money to do stadium now. Mm. Also, <laughs> also, but, but I'm sure we'll, we'll find, we are find, going we'll to, find out. We're, we're going to welfare now. Yeah. You know, we're going to welfare now. Where, which is crucial. Yeah, yeah, which is crucial. Because, listen, I am not going to allow my son, mm. who plays in Arsenal Academy, mm. I won't agree. <laughs> That's well, true. We will come later, lot, don't yeah, worry. There's, there's a whole lot to do, and uh, we'll still go back to the drawing board and ensure that we'll get things right with our football, with our sports in general in Nigeria. And someday, sometime soon, we'll be giants again.